Welcome to another video, today another desk wind tunnel session. For this I designed this little holder, so it's basically an end plate with one screw and that allows us to change the angle of attack of this wing. That is just a standard profile that's creating a little bit of downforce and we can change the angle here. So I created exactly the same profile again, just a bit shorter, so we can analyze the tip vortex because our streamlines will be in the middle where the white line is in the wind tunnel. Then I've created this very curved profile. As you can see, it's creating downforce on one side and lift on the other side. So let's see how that one looks like. And we have one wing element which has the same span but it's trying to reduce the tip vortex by reducing the cord length and also it's a lot thinner profile at the end. As you can see here, so it's a very thin and symmetric profile at the end. So let's see how these wings will perform. We can see how the streamlines are building up now. We can increase the speed. And you can see that there are some separations behind that. I mean, it's not a super clean flow. And actually we have some, so not such a super clean surface below, but around 100 kilometers per hour indicated here. Of course, it's not really 100 kilometers per hour we can see quite a nice flow. And if we now reduce the speed, we get a lot of thick streamlines. So we can see pretty nicely what's happening here. And if you wanna stop it, you just press it and that's it. Or if you start again and then you turn it down to zero, it's cleaning itself. Okay, so Let's change the angle of attack now. Let's see at which speed it's actually separating. Oh, we can already see a separation bubble here. So you can actually see how the flow is separating on the bottom and you can also see this separation bubble, so how the flow is reversing actually, so it's flowing back to the wing. Let's reduce the speed. Now we can see how we can cure this separation bubble. And if we reduce it to super low speed, we can just flood the whole chamber here with foam, which is pretty nice to see. Yeah, so you can see that it's actually separating pretty early with this higher angle of attack, which is not a surprise. This is what we expect. Okay, so I put the shorter version now inside and a little bit further in front and pretty much on the line with the tip of the wing. So let's take a look what this will do now. So we close it. Now we can set it to around 100 kilometers per hour. And you can already see what's happening at the tip. Let's increase the speed a little bit. So this is at 200 kilometers per hour now. And you can actually see how the upper streamline is moving to the lower one. So you go from the higher pressure to the lower pressure. So we go from the upper side down to the lower side and all that should become more clear once we increase the speed. So you can actually see how the flow is spreading apart and how these upper streamlines 
are moving to the bottom and this is creating this tip vortex. And basically what's happening here is that it's spinning so fast that it's basically like a carousel, so everything moves to the outside. So in the middle is nothing, which means there is low pressure. And this low pressure is pulling the wing back like a rope, and that is basically induced pressure. So we can also see it very nicely here, how the upper streamline is then moving towards the bottom, and this spinning direction of this uh, movement we can see further downstream. Now let's try some other wings. So our next wing is our curved wing. So let's see what this one does. The cool thing is we can have more downforce in the center, so closer to the end plate. And at the tip we can go to the other direction and possibly reduce the tip vortex. So we see this is a lot smoother. We see that the upper streamline is not going to the lower side, of course, because this is the higher pressure one now. So if anything happens here now, the lower one would move to the upper one. So exactly the other way around, because this wing is twisted. Let's increase the speed. And we see that it's basically still attached around the tip. So that's very nice. And let's see what's happening further in board. We can see how it's creating more downforce here. So we clearly push the streamlines to the top. There's al already some separation starting at the bottom. And now we can see how it's fully separated at the bottom. Maybe we can attach the flow again. Okay. Very nice. So I'm going to change the angle of attack now slightly in this direction. So let's see what happens here now. So we can see how the opposite effect is happening now compared to what we've seen before. So we see that the lower streamline is moving to the upper side because we have the high pressure area underneath now and we have the low pressure area on the top. The flow always goes from higher pressure to lower pressure so we can see that the tip vortex now is actually going the other way around. And we have our backed off wing. So we have a thicker cambered profile here at the end plate. And we have a symmetric thinner profile, also with a lot shorter cord on the outboard side. Um, we have not an ideal surface here from the 3D printing, but the lower side is okay. So if we see separations from the top, we know why. So let's put this one in. Right now the angle is adjusted so that the out board bit should be straight, so the inboard side should still create some downforce. So let's see how that one works. So we can also see it from the top here. It's a pretty nice clean flow. And it's not really doing a lot to the streamlines. It's not really pushing them off a lot or pushing them up. But here, closer to the end plate, we can see how we clearly push the streamlines further up. So we see how we push them apart in the middle because we push the upper ones up, so which means it creates downforce. And now let's see what the tip is doing. So it's exactly the same angle as before. We could see that we produce some downforce in the center. 
in the middle it's relatively undisturbed and at the side, at the tip, we can see that it's not affecting the flow very much, which is exactly what we want. So we don't have this tip vortex and we have the small symmetric profile which is slicing through the air and doesn't really disturb it a lot. Can also have a look around here. So it's a nice clean flow and this is how we can efficiently reduce the tip vortex and reduce induced drag. So which is pretty much what airplanes do and also birds are doing, especially birds, uh, glider birds at uh, the water, at the sea, seagulls for example. So really nice to see how this principle works here on your desk. Let's increase the speed again to see what's happening. The flow is getting less tidy, but all the way up to 200 it looks still okay. Yeah, very nice. We can also reduce it, so 21 km per hour is the lowest speed we can do and we can see that we have a lot of foam here now, or a lot of smoke here now. And cleaning. And of course, at last, you are all keen to see what a Formula One car is doing in here. So let's check out the McLaren Aerodynamics, just for fun. And we can see, oh, big separations from the halo, big separations from the TV camera. There's a lot of room for improvements. The rear wing is completely in the separation bubble, so it doesn't really do a thing. Let's see if the Toro Rosso is better. So Toro Rosso, Visa, Cash App, whatever this is called. We put it here slightly off center so we can see the flow um, not exactly in the center, a little bit better. So maybe see a better flow to the rear wing. Oh yeah, and the rear wing is a little bit better flow now, but we can see the separations coming from the from the front suspension. You can actually see how the front wing is pushing the flow above the front suspension when there are some separations, but they travel over the side pod. And we actually see a separation bubble here at the front wing. Can you see that? Right in this corner here. And we can also see how flow is separating and then actually flowing backwards here on top of the floor. Of course, that's not the case in a real Formula One car, but here it's quite interesting to see these effects. We also see the big separation bubble behind the car. And here you can see how the flow is pushed outboard. So if you're interested in checking out the aerodynamics of your favorite toy cars or you want to do some simple wing analysis on your desk in your lunch break, check out the link for this desk wind tunnel below the video and you can also find some discount code there. So I hope you enjoyed this and see you next time.